the top of the 222 building on College Avenue in downtown Appleton. It's Varsity Roundtable with Ricardo Arguello, Brett Christofferson, Jim Rosendick on tonight's show. Connor wrestlers Grayson Clark, Lucas Peters, and Brian Wynans. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricardo Arguello. All right, hey, welcome everyone back to the Varsity Roundtable. Weekly look at high school sports in the Fox Valley area and the only live online high school sports talk show in the state. I'm Ricardo Arguello, part of the USA Today Network, Wisconsin digital live stream team. We are here in amazing high definition on the 10th floor of the Mothership, the Post Crescent here at the 222 building downtown Appleton. Thank you so much for joining us. And I am proud to uh, have three representatives from the two-time defending uh, Division One state champion wrestling team from the Kakana Ghost. We got... Closest to my right, we have Brian Winans. Did I say that right? Yep. All right. There we go. Uh, next to him is Lucas Peters. Yep. And then Grayson Clark. There we go. Yeah. The three guys are on board here to talk about the great seasons that they've been having as individuals and also their quest to become a three-time uh, team state champions. But before I start, I want to let everyone know that we are live and interactive. So I know everyone from Kakana is tuning in right now. If you have any questions for these three guys, and I know you do, just log in if you're watching on a tablet. If you're watching on your desktop, even if you're watching on your phone, uh, if you scroll a little bit down, you should see a chat application. Log in. Give yourself a name that everyone uh, recognizes. Don't be putting anonymous or guess or some other name that Brett will mess up. Uh, and then we should be good. These guys can't wait to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, again, we have Brett Christofferson over there behind the Dell computer getting those questions over to us right away. Don't forget about Jim Rosendick. Uh, he's punching buttons behind the live stream machine, getting things done. Like I do before every show. And some of the guys have been on the show before. I want you, ladies, I know it's going to be hard to resist, but you can't be asking for numbers or any kind of things like that. This is just wrestling. Sorry, boys. You guys are on your own when it comes to uh, the opposite sex, all right? Uh, that's all it is. Yeah, no, no numbers or anything. So here we go. Let's get to know the guys a little bit. And to go down the line, we're going to start here with Brian. Brian, I want you to let everyone know the, uh, the weight classes that you complete in, that you compete in, and also how you got in to wrestling. Go ahead. Um, I compete at 132 in D1, and I got into wrestling because my older sister first started it, so I was on the mat since I was like one or two, and it just came natural to me. Okay, great stuff. Now, Lucas, you've been here before, but yeah, let everyone know again uh, the weight class or weight classes that you compete in. How you got into wrestling? Um, I wrestled at 126. Um, I started out wrestling. Uh, no one in my family ever wrestled, so it's not really very common, okay. a common start. But I was kind of an aggressive kid and like scrapping around. So my dad said, you know, I might as well try it. <laughs> uh, he had some friends in high school that wrestled. So I just started doing it and I just fell in love with it from, from there. Interesting stuff. Okay, how about for you, Grayson? Uh, I compete at 138 and I got into wrestling because uh, I tried about every other sport imaginable and I was terrible at every single one of them. So naturally, I just found my way to wrestling and I like the work behind it and I like the combat. So I stuck along with it. All right, good stuff here. Hey, if you have any questions again uh, for Grayson, for Lucas, and for Ryan, log into that live chat and ask away. Brett can't wait to relay those questions over to the guys. You guys are all having fantastic seasons. Let's just get that right out of the right out of the way. Individually, your team is doing well, uh, ranked number one, I believe. Uh, and, and just just give me. We'll go down. The, we'll start over there with Grayson. But just give, just give me. Are you at where you need to be? I mean, that you know, we got the FBA conference meet coming up this weekend playoffs is right after you guys individually too and then you can speak about the team too are you at where you need to be right now yeah you know we've been having some good practices this week we're coming off of the good Pulaski tournament so we we found some stuff for the individuals to work on we we all have our stuff that we struggle with and that we can work on and I know that from a team perspective we're all ready to go everyone's been having great weeks of practice so we're excited for this postseason run and it's yep. going to be something special. Yeah, Lucas, talking about, I mean, what he mentioned about postseason run. You've been through this. What's that like? It, does your, your, uh, your, the mental part change for you at all during this point? It's, it's kind of like you're gearing up for that. It's kind of like win and go home, especially when it comes to the individual. Um, too. I, think, I think as a team, 
we're we're ready. We we could go in and, and wrestle all these other teams right now and do pretty well. But I think you have to continue to train that you're not there, so you keep getting better and better through the whole weeks. Um, I think that's just something I apply as my individual aspect too. Um, yeah, I'm, I've been doing well so far, and uh, I'm on track to do what I want to do. But you just always train like you're not. So then that little bit of that underdog mindset. So once you get to the big matches, you're you're ready to go. Wow, great mentality to have. How about for you, Brian? Your thoughts on individual and team? Um, I think our team is for for sure ready to go. Okay. But like Peter said, we always need something to work on and something to get better at. And team wise, I just think we're ready for the conference and others to come. Yeah, I mean, I forgot how many times you guys have won conference. I mean, it's more than 20 times in a row. It's some, it's some incredible number, Brett. It's, it's just really phenomenal what Kokona has done in terms of dominating the Fox Valley Association. Brett, let me know when you have something online. You know, I, I wanted to circle back now. Grayson, you mentioned the Pulaski. That was actually a great tournament you guys had. There was a lot of great teams there. You know, Coleman was there, uh, Luxembourg Casco. So some real heavyweights uh, in the wrestling world. Do you guys captured first place there. I thought you guys did a great job at the Chiefs head, and that's actually kind of want to talk about too. Start with Grayson, and then the other guys, if you guys want to comment on that as well, because the Chiefs head, again, another great tournament, a lot of great teams there, and uh, from what I from what I gathered from the results, you 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 act, actually ended up winning the 138 pound class, correct me if I'm wrong? Yep. What did you think about that, and then the other guys too, if you want to comment as well? Yeah, you know, I thought it was a great tournament. We would, That was fresh off of the Minnesota Christmas tournament, which is Right up there with Cheesehead. It's okay. When it depends on the way. It could be tougher at some weights, but we had a we had a decent Minnesota Christmas tournament, and I know that we came back and at Christmas break it was a nice little break for us to kind of regather our thoughts. And then you had guys like Jordan Luce who went out there, and I me and Machik were talking the other day. He out wrestled his seed by eighteen places. He was and and going, he he's at two twenty or twenty five. He's at two twenty. Okay, right. I believe he was a twenty six seed going in, and okay. I think he ended up with seventh. Yeah. So it was 19 places he out wrestled the seed, but that was just, it's guys like that that make the team really, really good and come together, you know, and it's its awesome to see, and it, it was made all the team happy for Luce. Yeah, great stuff. We'll go with Brian and then Lucas on this. So, yeah, what were your uh, takeaways from that tournament? Um, I made it to the finals there. Had a, a tough match in the finals. He was a kid who was pretty good. He's from Illinois. Okay. But I think our team performed really pretty pretty good yeah considering that we had a bunch of nationally ranked teams there and what do we take like fourth or fifth yeah, fourth, fourth, fourth I think yeah that's which impressive. is pretty good with like four nationally ranked teams there yeah your so thoughts on that Lucas? um yeah I mean pretty much the same thing I think one thing Grayson was saying is uh people think that what makes a good team score is the four or five heavy hitters that are winning right. the tournament but what really it is is those guys on the backside that are getting all those wins they're getting four or five wins back to back to back to really boost your team scores and that just goes unappreciated and I mean as us we notice that because they're our teammates but like the fans don't really think about that but yeah. really that's what's given us all the points so and not just that and we can trans let's transition a little bit and talk about the team aspect of it when you guys are going in, going in for your third team state title how important is that because you know there's givens right you three are kind of kind of givens in terms of likely winning your respective match but then it comes down to how you win your match, right? You guys mm -hmm. obviously want to get the pins and, and the maximum amount of points or attack ball, whatever. Um, or then some of your guys who are going against uh, some really good wrestlers, it's about, right, am I right with this? Not not losing or not getting pinned. Yeah. Can you talk about that? We'll start here with Brian. How, how, as a team, every match counts something when it comes to those team matches, doesn't it? Yeah, so in one of our warm-ups, we do neck bridges and we just try to make our necks stronger. Right. So we're able to get off our backs and not give up those pins. And we just really train on not giving up as many points as and just keeping it close, keeping the match close. Yeah. Your thoughts on that, Lucas? Um, yeah, I mean, same thing. He was saying, like, we'll do drills. A guy starts with a headlock or starts with a cradle, and you're fighting just to not get pinned and save points for the team. Or, you know, it's just that's what wins those big duels. And people, like I said, people just don't realize that on, that's something that's winning all those duels. I think I know for a fact last year at Team State, there's kids that just went out there and battled the whole time. Right. Maybe the score didn't look like it, but like they were fighting the whole time. And if their number one guy on their team doesn't get a pin, that's just like a momentum stopper, even though he teched him or whatever, but he didn't get that one extra point. It doesn't seem like a lot, but in the end, that adds up. I was just gonna say, great you wanna add to this too. Yeah, though, when you see that midway through the match, you see a kid who was supposed to pin somebody, didn't pin somebody. Yeah. That kind of galvanizes the team, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I remember last year's specific duel in general was Stoughton. 
uh, it kind of goes unforgotten that our 106 pounder and our yeah. 113 pounder both got huge, huge matches there. I don't think they're necessarily expected to go out there and win their mat that, those matches, and they knew that. But they went out there and they battled, and yep. they they won yeah. those matches and proved something to the coaches, to the team. It was Mason Hansel and Michael Pozorski. I'll never forget those two matches. It was just a huge swing for us. Yeah. All right, great stuff. Uh, we got something from online, Brett. Okay, here we go, guys. Billions could be watching us. China. China may be checking in. I don't know. What do you got? I'm guessing China's got some more things to worry about. Yeah, you than, never know. Uh, maybe Varsity Roundtable tonight. But we've got some some uh, Facebook questions and some online. Let's Ooh, start great. with online. Don Gable. Don Gable's Don, checking in. He's checking in. I told the, you the anybody leg- could be watching. Yeah, the legendary Don Gable wants to know, why is Kakana so good year after year after year? That's a great question. Uh, is, is it something you can particularly point to? Is it, the, is it just the talent? Is it the coaches? The community obviously is behind yeah. you guys. So uh, anybody want anybody can answer that one right away. I got one. Okay. It's my personal favorite that I think is a big aspect of Kakana wrestling, and it's the whole city okay. Like is just behind it. Like, when people when they see Kakana, I always like I always thought of wrestling, and I still I, I still think of it when I see the word Kakana, and everyone in the city knows that we have a good program. And they like watching it, whereas I think other cities around the area or around the state aren't don't back wrestling as much as they do other sports. That's and, true, and it, I think it shows. So that's I, one thing I, that I, definitely I, helps. I concur. That is a complete. He is completely right on. Any guys, uh, anything to add on that? I'd say our varsity reserve team actually. Yeah. I mean. They they went to a J or they went to a varsity tournament this year while we were at Minnesota and right, they, right. they went out there and they took second, as, again competing against other really good varsity yeah. teams. So uh, we don't we got guys that are constantly you know whether that's a varsity guy getting pushed by the guy that wants to make the lineup or just when guys graduate you got guys to replace them. I mean we we had four or five JV state champs this yeah. year, mm-hmm. so. I We're, think almost everybody our, placed. Our so. JV team is really, really good, so I think that's part of the reason as well. Yeah, cool. they won the tournament there. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to add to Brian? Um, yeah, it's our, our JVs are just doing phenomenal, and they just, just come back in the lineup next okay. year's. Yeah, I was going to say, it just keeps it. It's never – it's just reload. The rebuild, rebuild does not happen at Kakani. Do you have something else, Brett? It doesn't sound like it's going to slow down. No, it doesn't. Soon based on that. Hey, Joe Schmidt is on the chat, wants to know, who's your biggest rival individually and as a team in oh the boy. state? Oh, boy. Biggest rival individually and uh, yeah, in terms of the team stuff. So Stoughton. we'll start with Brian here and go and go, and go down the line. I say team-wise, I say Stoughton. Okay. It's just always been back and forth between them for the state finals. Okay. So I think that for a team, and then individually, I think, honestly don't really know about that one. Yeah, I don't really got anyone. You don't have anyone? I don't really have any rivals. I mean, mm-hmm. team-wise, I'm going with Stoughton, too, just because that's okay. just what it's been for a long, long time. But individual-wise, I don't know. Anybody who goes out there and wrestles and does what a wrestler does has respect for me. So okay. there's no real bad blood anywhere for me. Okay, how about for you, Grace? Team wise, I'd say probably Hortonville and Nina. I mean, they're 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 teams that they're in our regional, they're intersectional. They want they want to knock us off. They right. want the, they want to go down to they want to wrestle in the barn on yep. a, on Friday and Saturday. So I believe that those are the teams that we got to compete against next, and those are our biggest rivals right yeah. now because that's what's on hand. Anybody individually that? Uh... Oh, I think there's a lot of guys. I mean, everyone wants to knock me off. Everyone wants right. to, everyone's given their best. So I believe that anyone that steps a line and. It's always a competition, and it's always a rival. Though. Okay. That's a good answer. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Well, we, let's do another one. Well, let's Brett. go to Facebook here, the Vision Quest podcast. <laughs> okay. Great 1980s yes, movie, Yes, that, that was, yeah. That's more our wheelhouse, Ricardo. Uh, who has the Jacob's Ladder record? Mm. First off, explain what the Jacob's Ladder is, okay, but, gentlemen, if you could? Um, Torture. Yeah, it's, <laughs> okay. It's, good way to describe it. Uh, it's, uh, it's a workout machine that we have that we do about uh, once, once every other week, you know, every every few days we do it and uh it's a self-paced machine so you strap your height on and you put a belt on okay. and it clips in and as you walk it's like you know the carnival game where you have to climb the ladder well it's like that but it just keeps going oh and okay. it just keeps going we do 300 steps Ooh. i'm not gonna brag but i do have the school record okay and what's the record what's the record a minute and 28 seconds okay so i beat that last year and I'm kind of close to it right now. I'm right around 130, so I think I can I can break it this year. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll yeah. see. And, and what was the original question about that? It was uh, it was just uh, who has the the record. Oh, so it was. So so okay. Yeah. So Lucas, had, uh, if you want to add on Brian or or, or or Grayson on, you said torture. And I, it, 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 I mean I, I I like it. It's actually we haven't been doing 
Jacob's Ladder as much this year. We've been doing more of the stair stepper, which okay. that's more conventional, I would say. Uh, but we do 500 steps on that okay. at maximum pace. So I think that, I mean, yeah, we just we got up. those things that push us. So it's one of them. Yeah. Would you uh, torture? Would you describe that? Would you also describe it as that, Brian? It's like a hate love relationship <laughs> because <laughs> you love it because it gets you better, but then you hate it because it hurts yeah. in the moment. Oh, Jacob Carter, we should try that. Sometime. No, yeah, I don't. See, think, we, hey, I don't think you guys hey, want to. We, we have we have yet to go ten <laughs> flights up here uh, yeah, on the stairs. We have a very nice elevator. elevator that helps us with that. That's a great question. Yeah, go ahead. Let's you do have one, another one more from Pauline. Wants to know what advice do you give to the upcoming youth wrestlers, mm. Caspers and Phantoms, and all of the youth of the Fox Valley. Here you go. You guys are, are grizzled veterans now, right? Uh, you guys get to you know hand down that wisdom to everyone. We'll start here with Lucas. Go to Grayson and Brian on that. So, what would um, you pass down? To the, I mean, they view you guys as heroes too. You have to remember that as well. Um, yeah, I think that's something sometimes I forget about is that they're looking up to the high school athletes like that. But one thing I'll say for the little guys is the Kakano program specifically has really good coaches at almost all the levels. Right. Uh, young guys, middle school, and obviously high school. So listen to the coaches around you because they they definitely care about you. They care about you succeeding, and they know what they're talking about. Some middle school coaches or maybe don't, but Kakana guys do so you got to be listening to those guys interesting how about for you Brian um yeah that's for sure you want to listen to coaches your your young brains won't really figure out as much until you get to like middle school but it'll just get harder and harder but easier and easier at the same time okay all right cool Grayson I think it's more off the mat stuff for the little guys you gotta I think that you just gotta have fun. You gotta have fun. You got if you're not having fun, you're never gonna enjoy the process. You're never gonna want to go to practices. That's true. And then admire, admire the guys that you look up to, whether it's the Robert Lees, the Keaton Cleavers, mm -hmm. whoever that may be. Even if it's just a guy on a, on the team now, you gotta admire them and keep working to be like them. When you guys were on, this is a little bit off script here. You guys were all like youth wrestlers and then going to the, the weekly tournaments, that kind of stuff. Have have you seen or did you ever feel like uh, the, the uh, people talk about maybe the burnout thing? Did, was that ever something that have you seen uh, maybe a friend or someone who I can't handle this? This is just too much. And and what does that what does that speak about you guys kind of completing the process? It's it's not really for everyone, right? My right. That takes a lot of mental fortitude to to go through all that stuff. Anybody want to comment uh, on that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of Machik read an article to us earlier this week about just having fun and enjoying it. Right. Uh, if you're if you're having fun and enjoying it, you you won't get burnt out of it. Okay. It's just you need to enjoy the process. You need to enjoy the grind. You need to enjoy it all and absorb it all. Okay. Anybody else want to add anything to yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, same thing. Just having fun when you, like, say, when uh, if you enjoy your job, you'll never work a day in mm -hmm. your life. It's kind of like the same thing. If you enjoy working hard and getting better, it doesn't seem like you're working. So. All right. Good stuff, Brian. Anything? I say, like, a big part is having a good team to keep you, like, bonded together. Okay. They'll make you want to... It'll make others want to come up for wrestling because they say their friends wrestling. Okay. I just think it's good to have like a good bond with your team. You know, enjoy it more. All right, great stuff again here with Kakana Wrestling. Brett, I think should we should we do our little timeout right now? Let's do our halftime. Uh, we got pay the bills, guys. You got promos to run and everything. So we'll be back with uh, the second half of the Varsity Roundtable after these messages.
right, welcome back uh, to the Varsity Roundtable here with uh, two-time defending Team State champion Kakana uh, Wrestling here, Brian Winans, Lucas Peters, and Grayson Clark. Um, I wanted to get back to, to Grayson on, on your quest to truly, first off, three time, he's a three-time state champion individually that really puts you in rarefied air. Now you're going for something that's even higher than that. That's one of the extremely rare four-time state champions. Give us some thoughts on that. That is just an incredible uh, accomplishment that you're shooting for. What would it mean for you to do something like that, uh, if you could, Grayson? Yeah, it would, I mean, like you said, it's not really seen that often. And I believe that it's just because of my parents and the people that I've surrounded myself by. My parents, my, my sister especially too, they, they make sure I'm always in a good mental state. My sister's calling me a lot and she's talking to me. She's asking if everything's okay. It's my friends, my family, everyone. I mean, they're always checking up on me and I, I think that that's a huge part of it. I put myself in a great environment yeah. and I got a lot of great people in my life that have helped me along the way. So it mean a lot to me and I think that there's a lot of people that it also mean a lot too just because they've been along for the journey. How incredible would it be also if you could comment because let's be honest, Kokona has had some great individual wrestlers. You guys had three-time challenge. Obviously, Lee comes to mind. I was there when uh, that controversial that controversial match where he should have actually won the state title. But what, does that even make it more cool? Because you guys aren't just some program. You guys are the best D1 program in the state right now. And to be the only four-time winner, have you, have you thought about it, in, I guess, in those terms? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's some food for thought for me. It's... It's a it's a it's a pressure and it's a privilege for me. It's I like the I like the opportunity to prove myself. I like that mm -hmm. that I've been put in the opportunity to do so. And it's just it's rare, you know. I mean, you could argue that there's guys on that wall that Machuk was talking about Joe Buddy the other yes, day. One yes, of the buddies. Right. He was great, but he didn't have that that event that like struck him until his sophomore year. Okay. And if that would have struck him eighth grade year, I think he would have been a four timer as well. So I it's just part of it is luck at the same time so but it would be really cool all right good stuff i'm gonna do one more question before we go back to online bread and then we'll we'll have our little how well do you know game but let's talk about coach machik a little bit what can you tell me about him that people might not know now i, I know obviously grayson and lucas you've been on the show before but I, I still need some stuff look every time i talk to coach machik the guy is so intense he has a lot to say and i really respect him i've been talking to him since i was here oh six so I've gotten to know him a little bit. Uh, just, but what are some things me, people might not know? Would you say, Grayson, about about Coach Machek? He's he is as identifiable with your program as anything. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a national coach of the year, so yeah. he's he's amazing. But that he that that picture says it all. Right <laughs> okay. um, he cares a lot, and it doesn't matter what back your background is. It doesn't matter what you do off the mat necessarily. He just cares about what's happening in the room and he cares about what's happening out of the room grade wise what's happening he wants to make sure that you're a successful man first and that's the first and foremost yeah that that comes first to him so i think that's what's part of making him so successful because you got nothing but good in the program you got guys that are all working together for the same the same goal we all want we all want that team title at the end of the year so he's done a great job of just building young man men and that's Part of it. That's a great question because uh, as, as athletes, uh, you know, coaches um, hold you accountable. I guess in a way, would you say that about my? Because that's a, that's what I get from him every time I'm talking. I'm like, man, he's holding you young men accountable for what you guys do. And you get that too, Lucas and Brian. I mean, yeah, yeah, he's definitely always holding you accountable. I think one thing that he has that I haven't had with any other coach is he's willing to build a relationship with you as like, you know, as he's not that's outside of wrestling, like. Him and one of our assistant coaches went golfing with me and Grayson this summer. We played a, you know, a friendly competition. So, and he's all you know. He's not, not strictly focused on wrestling. Like okay. we talk baseball all the time. He was a, you know, he's a great baseball player when he was in high school and even after. So, I w I love baseball too. So we talk about that. You know, we don't always have to talk about wrestling. I think that's something that really holds us all together as a team. Is like we can have, you know, a little bit of a friendship instead of just. You know, he's always coming down on us where, you know, he's got that nice side to him a little bit. Anything to add, Brian? Yeah, I th feel like we all com uh, share that competitive side. So, like, sometimes I'll also play, like, tennis against okay. Machek. Like, after, like, a lift or something, I'll go out there and play tennis. And you and beat him? Mm, no. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately. He's, okay. he's the, the gym class World teacher. Class. Oh, right, right, right. He's right, good okay. at every sport. Yep. He's the Olympic athlete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, and what about that golf? Who won that golf? He w they Howdy. won by one stroke. Oh, wow. On, on okay. the 18th hole, they beat us. So okay. All we right. got Good. him this summer, though, Matt Check. We're coming after you guys. Good <laughs> stuff. All right, Brett, what, you have something quick? You guys about bowling, though? Yeah, yeah. What happened? Did you guys go bowling, bowling today? today? We had bowling tonight. I we'll say, we'll say my team won, but we didn't. Yeah, we okay. took. We, Were we, coaches we, involved for? Uh, no, no. It was just okay. Just we had the best uniforms, and that's all that. They may not have the best uniforms, but they play slower than I did. So. Okay. <laughs> Interesting stuff. So, that's good. Now, do you guys do that regularly? That little bowling thing, or is that just periodically? Just annual. The season? Annual. Well, once annual, a year. annual world competition okay. of bowling. Yeah, that's good Kakana stuff. See, that's good. Outside the box, that's a that's a good thing. Did you say you had something from? Yeah, I got a few. Okay, uh, let's do this. Cole M wants to know what was everybody's uh, most memorable match of their high school career. Um, Ooh. go ahead, Lucas. You can start. Um, I think it's uh, last year at Team State, um, uh, Team Semifinals actually, not the Team Finals. We were wrestling Stoughton, and I was wrestling Champ Suddeth of Stoughton. Ooh. Okay, who's actually. I, one of my good friends, I like talking to him, he's a nice guy. Um, he had beat me at Cheesehead early in the year, and then I would beat him at individual, so we were kind of in a rubber match, and it was coming down to the end of the duel. And uh, I ended up pinning him in a cradle pretty quick. And the only reason it's one of my most memorable matches is the way Machek reacted. Um, in the video, you can see him in the background. <laughs> he, he got down on the floor to watch the pin, and he... He jumped up, and I know I just never seen him react like that. So he came out and gave me a big hug, and that was just something that's always stuck out to me. And really, it's oh. gonna stay with me for a while. Yeah, that intensity. What about for you, Brian? Uh, probably the team state finals match, my final match of my junior year. Uh, after the match, I held up the W and then got the minus one team point because I was showing it to the photographer. But then after the duel, it was I was a final match, so. One of my teammates handed me a Mountain Dew, and I chugged it right in front of the whole crowd. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Very nice. How about for you, Grayson? I'm going to go a little bit of an oddball, but I'll go probably my sectional semifinal match my freshman year, or sectional, sectional final match my freshman year, where I lost to Corrigan. Oh, right. Okay. Um, I th that was a spark that kind of lit me up, and it led me to that state run my freshman year, so I give a lot of credit and he was my practice partner too so yeah Shane Shane, Shane yeah Corgan? Shane Corgan sure. he was he's really good he's ranked Never number five in the country yes. right now for college D2 so he's doing really well but it's cool for me that he can light that spark under me and we can wrestle and we're buddies off the mat okay good stuff here Brad I gotta I gotta do a promo here before we we go on here hey Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear. See what I'm wearing right here? Yeah, get your team, club, or business name out there with Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear. They customize products specifically to fit their customers' needs. They are family-owned and have been for 20 years. They have the skills and experience to customize your apparel and spread the word about your organization. So delivery service is also available, so there's no excuses. Contact them today, 920-731-0922 or Cooney's0922 at sbcglobal.net. We're also sponsored by Cellcom. So, uh, and they have a very nice deal here. Let Cellcom help you accomplish your resolution to save with our largest sign-on bonus ever. Get $500 when activating a new smartphone line. Plus, make the switch to Cellcom and get up to an additional $650 per line. Visit Cellcom.com slash save for details. Now, Brett, we'll do one more online question, then we're going to go to the game a little bit, all right? So what do you got? Let's do this. Uh, Jason wants to know, how is wrestling overseas Helped here in the states. Not sure what that means. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. You guys oh, don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, you go first. Um, I've been to about probably 15 countries for wrestling. I want to okay. say in my All day. Right. So I've been fortunate enough to put in that opportunity. Um, and it means it means a lot. I wouldn't even say it means as much on the mat, to be honest with you. Okay. I think that it means more off the mat. There's this great guy. He's taken me on six or seven trips. His name is Jared Lewis. Okay. Uh. And he's shaped me into a young man. Like I said about Machek, he's done that for me, and it's it's amazing. It's kept me accountable, and I've learned so many valuable lessons from that. Wh which, uh, which 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 of the countries kind of struck you the most? Would you say? Uh, Estonia. It, it's a beautiful, beautiful country. It's you're in this con or this city called Old Town. It's just a walled off community, and it's it's gorgeous. Cobblestone streets. It's it's amazing. That's good stuff. Anybody else have any? Uh, experience um, with that we I've only been I've been to two countries now I went for the first time last spring me and Brian went together okay. uh, with Jared Lewis as well he's a great guy and does the uh, world traveling trip which is just amazing for young wrestlers who are trying to experience the culture 
but uh, I really like. I think one thing that struck me the most was their training aspect. Okay. Uh, they're very polite in like a weird okay. way. Uh, like if they, if they hit you with a hard collar tire or something, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, like I didn't, you know, and they're like, oh no, it's all right, you know, you're good. Yeah. And then, and then they just have that like politeness, but they're also very, very tough and aggressive. So. Okay. How about so. for you, Brian? Uh, I've been to five different countries. Okay. I've been to, my probably my favorite one was India. Okay. It was a a very different culture. Okay. And it was definitely super enjoyable. the The food wasn't my favorite. Okay. Like this, right. A little spicy. spicy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we had to wrestle in the sand there, and it was just a a weird but really cool and very to like, good soak up and learn their culture. Yeah. It was really nice. Hey, Lucas, you didn't give me your favorite country though. Um. Well, I've only. I was I've been to Estonia and Finland. Oh wow! Okay. Estonia is, I mean that's obviously my favorite one. It's the only okay. one I've really been to. But Grayson is right. It's, it's you're in this spot called Old Town, and all the roads are cobblestone. And the buildings are old. It's just it's a pretty cool environment. So all right, good stuff. They're so cultured, way more than we were when we were kids, Brett. Um, <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. We we want to do a, we we have a little competition between the three of you guys all going to compete against each other when it comes to this. Uh, it's a little game that we do. It's called How Well Do You Know? And uh, this was this was done by Rosie, by the way. Don't, don't look over here. This, these are the answers over here. But uh, Rosie kind of put this together because Rosie's a big, big music guy. He, li he likes music, and that's what Ooh. it's going to be on. It's about bands, okay? Yeah, he, uh, he's got this dang one. It. Okay, can, okay. Well, here, this, well, yeah, well, maybe Lucas, Lucas is maybe the favorite here. Uh, our four, we're going to have four questions and then a bonus one, okay? But the four questions are going to be on which band is named after a member, right? We're going to give you a couple uh, each question is going to have two bands, and then you, you know, you guys gonna have to raise your hand if you know what it is, and then you name the correct band that's named after a member of the band. Okay, is that cool? You guys got okay. this. Okay. So, okay, here we go. First questions. Okay, here we go. Which band is named after a member, Leonard Skinnerd or Van Halen? Which one oh. of those bands is named after a band member that's in is the it, band? Oh, it okay, Grayson. Leonard, oh. Leonard Skinner. No. Is it a trick question? Aren't they both? No, Leonard Skinner is actually named after a professor. Uh, he's not in the band, though. I had a 50-50 oh. shot. Yeah, you did. Oh, because he's not. <laughs> right, so the first question's out already, Brett. Uh, these are supposed to get di more difficult oh, as we go on here. But you get the you gist now? I should oh. Leonard, <laughs> Leonard Skinner's named after band, Leonard Leonard Skinner. Sweet Home Alabama, right? Who, yeah. Yeah, Leonard Skinner, that's the band, right? But the Leonard, the band's named after a, a, a professor or something like that, a teacher, oh. if I remember right. Yeah. We're talking about members in the band, named after a member in the band. Okay. Right. Okay, so here we so go. Van Halen is... Eddie Van Halen and yeah. Alex Van Halen. Okay, here we go. Next one, these two bands. Which one is named after a member in the band? Jethro Tull, Fleetwood Mac. Well, I got I, Jethro. I've never heard of the first one, so I'll go Fleetwood Mac. I guess. Okay. Well, he got the point. That's, that's it. That's one that, point. I didn't want to get. Remember to raise your hand. But okay. wait, one point for Lucas. You yeah. got this. That's uh. Okay. How about this? We're gonna go. Third question. Stevie Nicks. Yeah. The White Stripes or Hootie and the Blowfish. The White Stripes. You gotta raise your hand. But yes, <laughs> Lucas again two zero. Lucas my, is running my, away with my this. My check's going to be proud. Okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> this, and this one's a little bit tougher. Okay, the fourth question is the toughest one of all. Manfred Mann's Earth Band or the Marshall Tucker Band? Marshall Tucker Band. Well, you raised your hand first. Marshall Tucker Band. You and is it? it? It's, it's not. It was, I just I was going to guess the other one just because it was too obvious to be Marshall Tucker. Yes, it's actually Manfred Mann. He's yeah. the keyboardist in Manfred Band. That's three points. Man. That's three points for Lucas. But let me tell you something. We have a bonus question. It's worth four points. So uh, that allows you guys to kind of steal okay. this one. So good job, though, Lucas. Very impressive. Uh, Machek, you should be very proud of him. All right, I'm going to give you two, the, the, the names of two bands. You got to tell me if they're A, real, B, not real, or C, one is real, and then you got to name which one. Okay. Okay? These are the two bands. So A, B, or C, right? Rhino Bucket and Iron Butterfly. They're both real. They're both real. They both are real. Are they All right, really? so yeah, Grayson Clark wins as well. Just wow. like wow. that. Just like that. He really, that's, like Iron Man that's from right? ACT prep. Whenever there's an all the above, that's what you say. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's it. That's it. See, I didn't do these questions. Rosie did, so Rosie, you knew. Are they both like heavy metal bands? Or what kind I, of, I don't know. I don't know. I've, no, I've heard of Iron Butterfly, but. Yeah, Rhino Buck, it's like a ACDC knockoff. Okay. And okay. Iron Butterfly's 
you ever heard this song? In Agata de Vida. Yeah, that's, that, that's old. That's, that's like '60s, right man. Yeah, '60s. I'm sorry. '60s psychedelic. Maybe good the songs. Heard, heard, heard of Iron Butterfly? No. <laughs> yeah. So good stuff. All right, back to the questions. Uh, Britt, did you have something? Yeah, let's do this. Uh, Don Gable checking back in. Wow. I think this is for Grayson. Why Purdue? Why not Iowa? <laughs> Maybe it really is Don Gable. Yeah, I remember know. you know, and I did a story on Grayson because he, he you switched from Wisconsin to Purdue, but why not Iowa? You, why not Iowa? Um. <laughs> That's what Don wants to know. <laughs> so I do not have the Iowa style. We'll start with that. Okay. They're they're, they're a rough nose. They're okay. in your face, and I'm more of a. I don't know. Would you guys agree? I'm kind of yeah, all technical. over the place. I'm more of a technical. Okay. I'm interesting. Not, I'm not real physical, and that's where I fit the culture better at Purdue. I would say they're more. They're more. We're gonna expand on what you know. They're gonna. They're gonna teach you how to be really, really good at wrestling. They're not necessarily gonna teach you how to be tough. You're gonna get tough there, but. They're more focusing on the wrestling. And that's yeah. Okay. That's a good question from Don. Uh, boy, it's, he's Don wants me at, at Did Iowa. Did you say you still. had something else too? Bro? No, that was it. Okay. Uh, last call. Last well, call for questions. Yeah, last Don call Lord. because I do. I, I did want to go through this question: rituals and superstitions. Now, you guys may have given me stuff last year. Is it, if you want to expound on that again, but I want to hear what Brian does. Anything before a match, Grayson? Uh, now you're in your senior year. Have you changed up your anything that you do, or is it white Nike socks? Okay. Uh, always, always. Uh, Going with the orange singlet for most matches, white single for finals, the big tournaments. Okay. Uh, and always listen to J Lo on the floor before oh every match. <laughs> it's, oh my goodness. You can't what? get rid of it. It's it's just it's my thing. J Lo's great, Lucas. You're not liking that too much. It's just he's such a goofball. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's that's, that's interesting. Like, how about for you? Do, anything um, for you? I used to be really really bad. It's like I would have superstitions would take over okay. my performance. So. Uh, I've, my mindset coach actually helped me fix it. He said, change everything. Don't do anything the same before okay. every match to fix that. So I don't really have any. Oh. Um, only thing I do before every match is uh, I just give my coach one hard hand slap. Okay. Um, and that's it. And I just, it doesn't matter because then it doesn't mess up. You know, okay. If something goes wrong, it doesn't mess up your performance. So I try to not have any. So by not possible. having any, he kind of has one. I think that's we true. need a mindset coach. Bit. Right? All right. How about for you, Brian? Uh -huh. you do anything? Uh, I usually like to just tune into my airpods and just okay. listen to some like rap J-Lo? Oh not J-Lo. No, no, not, not so much J-Lo. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm more of like a, like a J. Cole or like a Kendrick Lamar. Okay. It's just better for my mindset and get me ready, get me rolling for the match. All right, good stuff. Did you say you had something else there, bro? Nothing, nope. Okay, yeah, so um, we did the kind of the advice for the younger wrestlers, so I guess uh, my, we're going to do shout outs before I do my final questions. So. We're gonna start farthers over to my right. This is where you do look at a camera, am I right, Brett? Or uh, Rosie? First, that yeah. camera right over there. First last year. So Grayson, look, look, look right at the camera, right over there. So go ahead, send some shout out to people who got you where you are today. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna give, there's quite a few people who That's have helped cool. me throughout my time. So Mr. Machek, Coach Machek, Zach Pearson, Josh Wagner, Jerry, uh, and then Othamat, definitely my parents. My parents first and foremost, my sister, who I said is checking on, on me every day. Uh, my girlfriend, my my friends, uh, and just everyone that's supporting me and my practice partners, especially. Good stuff, Lucas. Um, on the mat, uh, Coach Machek, Coach Pearson, uh, Coach Jerry, uh, Coach Wagner at AWA, uh, Coach Kochitsky at Team Nazar. Um, off the mat, my parents, um, my 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 grandpa. He's a huge supporter of me. Uh, my girlfriend. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. And like I said again, the Kakana community. They're, they're huge supporters of us. So. Outstanding. Your turn, Brian. Uh, for on the mat, I would have to say Machek, obviously, Pearson, all the all the Kakan High School staff, uh, Kangaroo Coach Cleaver, um, AWA Wagner, and off the mat, obviously, my parents, my, my family, my sisters, my, my pets. Yeah, you always okay, have okay. pets. And then, like, my girlfriend and just everyone in the Kakana community. It's always just been a great program. All right, good stuff. Well, Brett, we didn't have any other questions come in last second. Okay, well, we're going to wrap the show up here again with Connor Wrestlers, Brian Winans, Lucas Peters, and Grayson Clark. Look, I'm always at the Cole Center and at the Fieldhouse, right? So we're, we, you guys have a chance to really do something special at both venues. By the way, do you guys like the barn or do you like the Cole Center better? I never did ask barn. you that. Do you I've like only, the barn? I've barn? only wrestled in them both once, so I don't know. Cole Center. Cole Center. I, I like the Cole Center, too. I'll be honest. That was... Okay. That's something I've never really experienced till then. So. Well, I'm expecting you guys to do well. Is 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 being being on that top podium, right? Being at the top of the podium, right? Uh, are we going to see you guys 
getting that. Uh, we'll, we'll, start, we'll, we'll, we'll end with Grayson because we know about what he's shooting for. How about for you, Brian? But you, that's the goal, right? You, we, you expect to be on the top of that podium, Yeah, right? I want to be that number one state champ for sure. Okay, Lucas? Um, I said this last year. I said, uh, you, know, you don't really go in saying you're going to lose. So you go in ex you know, hoping that you're thinking you're going to win. So obviously the goal is to win. Yeah, and how about for you, Grayson? Yeah, I mean, obviously the goal is to win, and I want to have good performances along the way. So I'm excited for that opportunity and always gunning for it. And the team aspect, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Third time. I mean, you, you guys are already just a phenomenal. I, I called you guys a platinum program in D1 right now. Is that something that you... Uh, would, would, would it kind of be a disappointment if you didn't win a, the finish as a three-time state champ? So, you know, obviously for the two seniors, that's kind of special for you guys. We'll start over here at Grayson and come back this way. Uh, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't say it'd be a disappointment because it's such a hard, it's a hard goal to accomplish, but right. I'd be, it'd be a disappointment if we didn't go out there and perform our best. Okay. If we went out there, gave it our all, the man show us, Kaler, if they go out there, they do their part at the middle of the lineup and the heavies, we all do our part. Okay. I, I think that the rest takes care of itself, but okay. I, it's out of our hands at this point. All right, Lucas? Yeah, it's, I mean, same thing he said. Yeah, it would be sad if you lost, but if you go out there and do everything that you can control and it just doesn't fall your way, I mean, that's just how it, that's just how it happens. So. Okay, and how about for you, Brian? You can't really control a match and how it's going to end up, so you just got to hope for the best and just keep training to hopefully get that top podium spot for Team Spade also. All right, great stuff again. A great show here again with Kokona wrestlers, Brian Winans, Lucas Peters, and Grayson Clark. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your busy schedule, paying us a little visit. Best of luck. We'll see you guys uh, at both venues, the Cole Center and the Barn. We're expecting you guys to see you there. So best of luck, guys, uh, on all your in future endeavors. Uh, thank you again for tuning in to this episode of the Varsity Roundtable. I'm Ricardo Arguello. Again, don't forget about PC Bretzi at Twitter for you, but that's Brett Christofferson and Jim Rosenick. You can follow him at Metal Rosie on Twitter uh, as well. Everyone uh, expecting, what, next week to maybe have uh, possibly some more wrestlers, possibly some basketball players. Who knows what we're going to have. Best place to find out, facebook.com slash Varsity Roundtable. Until then, everyone, have a great week, and we'll see you back here next Wednesday for another edition of the Varsity Roundtable. Keep smiling.